What up, what up, what up? This is your favorite blogger, Miss T in the Shade. I'm here with my husband, Kev, on the beat. Yo, what's up, what's up? Yo, so we decided to jump on and do a less discuss on this whole LMA and Jaquez thing, you know, about this whole song. So, uh, let's discuss. Uh, I wanted to say, first of all, I don't like the song. Um, I don't, I don't like either version of the song. You know, it's not like lit to me so I don't really have a dog in this fight per se um that said I don't know I kind of go back and forth on it because on one hand like you know the LMA and Mustard and them they put out the track you know it's their track it's their art so they might feel like they don't want anybody to sample it or to cover it or whatever the case may be so I can respect that to some extent you know what I mean as an artist like I get that on the other hand, didn't she come up doing covers? You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, but at the same time, covers... Okay, covers is a whole different story. Like, it's one thing... Like I was saying earlier, it's one thing to do a cover of somebody's song. You know what I mean? Like, if I do a cover of an Erica Badu song, then that's me singing on and on. Those are her words. But if I play the instrumental on and on, and then I create my whole... Uh, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, my own song... Then that's a whole different story. And I monetized off of it now. In his defense, Jacquez said he has not monetized off his song. You know, off this song. You know what I mean? T-Pain jumped on Twitter and accused him of monetizing. He was like, brother, I haven't gotten any money from this. My whole thing about it is people can't really blame her. But people are jumping on her when it really wasn't her decision. It was DJ Mustard's decision to pull it off SoundCloud and YouTube. Me, personally, I'm not a fan of his and not a fan of hers. I'm not saying they don't have talent. I'm just not a fan of them. Fair. But his version really, really is good. And my whole thing is, I don't understand. I don't know where this is coming from. I don't know if DJ Mustard is just trying to flex right now. I mean, he's a producer for Mumble Rappers, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's just let me just also throw it out there that Booed Up is on a decline. Like, it was like one of the songs of the summer. It was definitely up there. You know what I mean? For one of the biggest songs of the summer. Um, it was like on a decline now, obviously. We're going into a new season. So, and like, I'm sure, I don't follow Ella May, so I'm sure she's at other singles that are probably charting. But nothing's going to like reach that like booed up level any again. So this is probably the best thing for her. Like at this, at this Well, that's t- kind of making, that's kind of um, getting to my point. Then why didn't DJ Mustard just reach out to, I think, uh, Jaquez just signed to Birdman and then. Why didn't he just reach out and was like, yo, heard the kids' version, heard the kids' rendition, loved it, want to get him and her on a duet, let's all make money. Because right. imagine if both of them would have jumped on this track together and did it as a duet. Right. I literally saw a page on Instagram where a dude mashed them up, and he made it, like, put their two songs together and did it as a duet, and it was beautiful. Like, that's, that, the song was nice. Right. So, my thing is, why didn't Mustard take that route instead of just pulling this kid's track off of SoundCloud and YouTube? You know what I mean? I will, I will throw it out there. And there's even whispers that he's talking about suing this kid. Now, see, I gotta, I'm trying to think about, like, I'm obviously not, like, the most industry connect. I know, like, a couple people. But, like, you know, I kind of keep my ear to the street. I'm trying to think about the links that, like, Mustard would have, and, like, Jaquez would have, obviously, Jaquez. I'm trying to think, like, is there any, because, like, that's another thing to take into account. There'd be behind-the-scenes friction with people that you don't always know. You know what I mean? So, I want to give, like, he might be going, so I, I don't know. So, I'm, I'm, I'm giving a little slight benefit of that to Mustard, because it's like, yo, I don't necessarily know. It might be on somebody Well, let's be realistic. That is practical, too, because Baby has beef with everybody in the industry right now. Nobody Basically. ain't really messing with him. So that could have been on some mustard, like, yeah, nah, you know, like, far as we know, Birdman still owed mustard some money, and he felt some type of way. Basically, and I mean, like, for Jacquez to have all this buzz, for him to be signed to Birdman, it's kind of like, yo, you should have had a hit by now. Like, I mean, I mean correct me if I'm wrong, because I, yeah, I don't follow Jacquez, but I kind of keep my ear to the street. If he had, like, a hit, I'm kind of sure I would have heard. I'm sure he's had some songs that have done well, but... I mean, he's in, like, if for him to be having this much attention on him, he should be able to generate a hit. You know what I mean? So I'm kind of wondering. they have, keep in mind, he's not in really in our demographic. To me, I feel like I've heard him. I've actually been in tune with him just that over the last week. And the kid can sing. I feel like if marketed correctly and groomed and taken care of correctly, 
He can be this generation's Usher. Because Usher was a sex symbol, and he could sing, and he could dance. He had talent. I think this kid could be marketed the same way because he's attractive. He got charisma. So they should market him the same way. Because there's no lane for that right now. Trey Songz ain't doing nothing. Trey Songz is like in and out of jail for like slapping people at book signings and shit. All this I seen over there like having orgies with Will Smith and his wife. So he ain't doing nothing. Neo like and his wife trying to be like K plus eight. They just having kids all over the place. So eight, there's no lane like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like Chris Brown gonna always do his thing because he always feels like he has something to prove. But let's be realistic. Who's really buying Chris Brown's? Who's listening to Chris Brown right now? Chris Brown fans. You know what I'm saying? So there's not really a lane, I feel like, out there right now. So I feel like this kid is marketed correctly and someone grabbed the hold of him. First of all, he needs a real label. You can get the hell away from Birdman. Yeah, that's... That's number yeah. one. He needs a real deal and a real label. Cause for like, And that's my point on this whole thing. Like, And it's not to diss him because, like, you know, like it ain't nothing wrong with remixing or covering, etc. But, like, I mean... Like, let's be real. Like, I guess, I, and like, I'm, I'm as an artist, I'll say this. Like, as an artist and also like as a fan, it's like I'm not trying to come at his artistic integrity. I'm not saying that, but I am saying that it ain't that many artists that's like that really feel it within themselves that are gonna keep covering and keep doing like remakes and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, so I guess there's a small part of me that somewhat wonders, like, well, I mean, you know. I don't know. That's I'm gonna just throw that out there into the air and just kind of lead that there. You know what I mean? Like, again, it's nothing wrong with covers. I'm not saying he don't have the capability, but and again, it might come down to the label situation. Like, you know, he should he should have access to some like, you know what I mean? Like, high quality producers. Like, he where's you know what I mean? Like, well, let's just imagine like this kid with the talent and everything that he has behind him. Let's get him on a real label. Just pick a real label, Universal. You know what I mean? Right. Like a real label. Like actually doing stuff for people. And um, let's just get, you know what I'm saying? Like get him marketing and everything. Next thing, like get him on like some real music. I don't care. Call up Neo. He ain't doing nothing right now. Neo has wrote some dope tracks. Neo wrote half of the B album. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Call up Neo. Get Neo on there. Like, yo, Neo, I need you to come write. Like, I need you to come help out. Doc Hazzy dropping his album. Boom. He kind of looks like... He could be like, like if anybody made like a Migos bobblehead dog, that's what it would look like. So let's get him on the track with Migos. Let's drop, you know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. let's, this kid has the potential to be more than what he's, you know what I mean? That's, I guess he's what I'm getting. He's just not at. being marketed correctly. That's definitely. Because he has at. talent. Right, exactly, exactly. And I mean, he could be one of these people like right now he's in a younger demographic, so he's appealing to the younger crowd. Like our daughter listens to him. But at the same time, Usher started when he was 14. So when we were that age, we were listening to Usher. But guess what? Usher kept going. Usher went from this album to this age to this age, releasing confessions. That way, my age group followed Usher from the time we were 14 to now we're 30 and we're still listening to Usher. That's what he can be. Basically. He just needs to be marketed correctly. And you need that good label. I mean, you need that good label. I will say... In LMA's, like, not, I guess not in defense, but, in, you know, to her credit, like, she seems to be in kind of a stable situation if Mustard is making these kind of moves with her. Like, I learned something today about the booed up track that I didn't know. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, people. If I'm wrong, correct me. But I heard somebody say that the song had been out for, like, a year before it blew up. Is that true? You know, boo? I have it? no idea because I don't follow her. Because you know my whole thing. Like, to me... To me, let's be realistic, okay? And let's talk about, like, the racially ambiguous elephant in the room. Mm -hmm. Like, to me, like, you got Ella May, Kalani, Jenny Aiko, Tanashi. Like, what, I mean, what, these women are like, you know what I mean? They're like, people. they're, they're no different than me. Now, tell me right now that, let's say Sky Jackson. Let's say Sky Jackson had the same talent LMA had as far as singing. Why? Because uh, Sky Jackson is like a clothing designer, model, actress. She does her thing. Right. You know what I mean? Kid got spunk, lover. But let's just say she had like the singing ability that LMA had. You think the day she would be as marketable as LMA? Nope. With her dark skin and her kinky hair? We just, I mean, I was just saying, like, it just Do seemed... you know Terrell Hicks? I'm sorry to cut you off. Terrell Hicks, the woman that played Keisha and Belly. Do you know that she can sing her ass off? 
I did not know that. She can sing her ass off. But she wasn't marketable. Cassie was marketable. And it just you seems like saying? we just haven't, I guess maybe there just hasn't been a dark skinned uh, young woman that can sing that well. In the past, like, 10 years, I guess maybe that's why there aren't any in the mainstream, because hmm. they just can't sing anymore. I oh, mean, the dark right. skin sisters Because dark skin women cannot sing, that's right. I mean, y'all, you know, the sisters is not getting on, so I guess they not singing as well. No, well, no, I'm, I'm obviously kidding, like, don't come at me, I'm obviously being sarcastic. And to go further, uh, Kelly Rowland got dropped from her label the other year. And I don't know if people really, uh, people didn't really talk about this story that much, but she, her label told her that she had no value. Kelly Rowland, this is after she had uh, just come off of a hit song with David Guetta, was the number one song in the country for a couple months. Um, you know what I'm saying? Uh, the, a couple years before had a, had a hit, uh, you know, a, I think a gold selling CD, a freaking hit with Lil Wayne, you know what I mean? Like she is not like, it's Kelly Rowland, uh, but she had no value to her label. That's the white people way of saying you too dark skin and we can't market you because right now is the time for racially ambiguous women and you don't fit that mold. So sorry, don't call us. We'll call you. Basically, basically. So I think that's what like, I think, you know, I think it's one of those situations where like people be mad at the feeling. I always like to say that black folk, like people like, oh, black folk are angry. We have an attitude. Like, I think a lot of black folk just sense that shit is wrong in society. Just you wake up and it just don't even feel right. And a lot of times, a lot of us don't know how to even say it. I think it's the same thing with people coming to LMA. Like, I think people are just, you know what I mean? It's just like, yo, why is you like new R&B singer chicks bugging? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, why is y'all out here? Like, so yeah, I think... I think that plays a part of it, man. I think, you know, uh, let me also add in the fact that she's not from the States. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel I feel right. like, I guess I just feel like, and like, I, babe, when we were talking about it this morning, I might have went a little hard at her. I just feel like she could have navigated this better. I'm not telling her to just, like, come out and just, like, cuss mustard out on Twitter. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like she could have probably, like, saved herself a little more. She could have been, like, right. a little more. Because, I mean, I don't know, but then again... To be very fair, didn't you say that she, like, addressed a dude like Jacquez and was like, yo, like, you know. Well, she hasn't really said a whole lot. The whole Jacquez thing came. Like I said, he tweeted, like, T-Pain tweeted to him. Like, somebody tweeted first. Like, yo, Jacquez, why did you pull, like, why did your stuff get pulled from SoundCloud and YouTube, man? And then T-Pain said something like, yo, because he was making money off of it. And then Jacquez tweeted back, like, yo, my brother, I hadn't made no money off it. Like, what are you talking about? And then DJ Mustard came out with his whole, like, yeah, I did it. I, it was me. So what? Blah, oh, blah, blah. Gotcha, gotcha. I'm going to just close with this. All I can say is Jacquez has talent, a lot more talent than LMA. He has charisma. And I, I just want the kid to get behind a good label, get behind somebody that actually cares, get behind a good producer. You know what I mean? I mean, shit, go call Usher. Usher's responsible for Justin Bieber, and Justin Bieber had a good run. He's just an idiot. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, he can go get behind Usher right now, and Usher will, like, mold the shit out of this kid. You know what I'm saying? So, I just want the kid to succeed. I really want this kid to succeed. Like, you know what I mean? Like I said, he's not my lane, but I really want to see this kid make it, because right now, I feel like DJ Mustard got his foot on this kid's neck just to have his chest stuck out. I feel like this is more about ego than anything. Mm. So all I can say is, Jacquez, sky's the limit. Get you a label, bro. Get you a better producer. Get you a better deal. Get behind somebody that's actually going to push you forward. And uh, this your flavor blogger, T in the Shade, wishing you the best. Y'all remember to subscribe to my page. Me and my husband, Kev, on the beat. We out. We out.